we've got this truck that's got some initial amount of momentum, and they don't tell us how much momentum, so I'm just gonna make it up here. So I'm gonna shade in one, two, three, four boxes tall, two boxes wide, so some amount of momentum right there. I've got eight squares colored in there to signify that momentum. Now we know what the final momentum is in this case because the truck comes to a rest, so there's zero momentum. So we gotta get rid of all that momentum. We have to change it by a certain amount. How much? Eight squares worth of momentum we gotta change. That means we need eight squares worth of impulse to take it away. So what if we're gonna do a gentle stop like this? Well, that means not that much force over a longer period of time. I still gotta get eight squares, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four wide, a longer amount of time, and then I'm gonna go two squares down. Why down? Well, we need a negative force because we gotta take away that momentum there. So this could represent the impulse required to change that. Eight squares, eight squares to get us down to zero squares there. So what would it look like if we made an emergency stop? Well, first thing is I'm going to go back and give us the same one, two, three, four, and then two wide. And again, there's nothing to indicate that this is what you have to do. I'm just picking some numbers to start with. And once again, our final momentum is gonna be zero. There's gonna be nothing there. So we have to take away eight squares worth of momentum in a sense, if that's a square is our unit. So I need a negative eight impulse once again. To indicate an emergency stop here, then we are gonna to have to do it quickly in a short amount of time, but that's gonna require a lot more force. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares down like that. So my time now is only one unit wide, but notice my force is eight wide. So again, if we put them sort of side by side, so to speak, here's a smaller force, we don't go down as much over a longer time, and here's a much bigger force over a much shorter amount of time. But the same impulse in each, same change in momentum for each. So here we have a bunch of cars testing out safety and they run them into this barrier. And an important thing here is it says, assume that the barriers all are identical and exert the same constant force there. So, sorry if that got blurred out for a second. It did on my end, I don't know if it did on yours. Um, so the same constant force uh, on the cars there. So we need to look at how much momentum each one has. That's simple, it's mass times velocity. So 3,000 times 10 is 30,000 kilogram meters per second of momentum for that one. 20 meters per second times 100 kilograms would be 2,000 kilogram meters per second on this one. 30 times 1,000 is once again 30,000 kilogram meters per second of momentum. And 20 times 2,000 is, in that case, 40,000 kilogram meters per second of momentum. So here's the key. Uh, rank them from longest to shortest amount of time. Well, the force is the same. We each have to take away all of their momentum and we've got to do that with an impulse. Well, this can't change. So we can just write it like this. The change in momentum has got to be proportional to the time. The more momentum you have to take away, the more time it's going to take. So that means the longest time is going to go over here, D, and D is going to take more time than A here, which is 30,000, which is the same as C, and that is greater than B. And our justification there is basically what we just said there the impulse momentum equation.